I'm talking today with Dr. Jason Tribbiano, who is an infectious diseases physician here at Austin Health and also with the Peter Mac Centre. Um, thanks for your time, Jason. Not a problem. Uh, you've written or you've co authored some research that we published uh, that's going online on the 11th of April about the prevalence of um, antibiotic allergy labels and what that means for prescribing trends. Hmm. What um, triggered you thinking you needed to write this research or get this research done? Yeah, I guess it's um, I guess it's, it represents part of a larger program. We're looking at antibiotic allergies and, mm. as you mentioned, their prevalence and impacts. And I guess we've come at it from an ID perspective, where we are fast running out of antibiotic therapies, increasing antimicrobial resistance, and when our well laid uh, antibiotic plans are undone by an allergy label, it's often frustrating. Yeah. But often at the detriment of the patient. So. We're trying to find out ways and how big the burden is of allergy labels in Australia and particularly amongst our high risk patients like the elderly yep. and what we can do to correct that in the future um, through dedicated antibiotic allergy services, oral challenges or just rubbing them off the drug chart. Tell us a little about your methodology. Who did you survey and how? Yeah, sure. So um, we did a, a multi-centre cross-sectional study. It was a, a nice collaboration between us here at the Austin and with the Alfred Health. Um, hospital. It was done in uh, May and June of last year mm -hmm. and we effectively we did a uh, uh, an audit of patients admitted under the general medical units over a month each morning generating a hospital list and then going and determining of those patients admitted how many had an allergy label how many were receiving antibiotics and then when it actually cross checks that allergy label with the patient yeah. um, getting a with a standardized survey um, an allergy description and then also seeing if that matched with what we had. And then finally, we offered the patient uh, an oral hypothetical re-challenge. I mean, by that is, um, would they be willing to have a challenge of an antibiotic or challenge their history in the future in a supervised environment? And that gave us some interesting ideas about some feasibility studies for the future. So um, it was quite a simple study design, which gave us some uh, very helpful information. So what did you find out about the prevalence of AALs? Yeah, so I mean, from our previous research, and this was done with, um, the National Antibody Prescribing Survey with um, Kaz Thursky's group, we found that the national average of inpatients was 18%. Mm -hmm. So in, our, in this study here, in our general medical patients, we found a prevalence of 20, 25, almost 25%, one in four patients. Wow. So it's quite a significant burden. Yeah. And I guess what we're lucky with this is because we were able to interview the patients, we were able to guess to, to look at the type of allergies they had. Yeah. And that was probably the most interesting thing is that you know of those 25% of people, 63% um, would have had a low risk allergy. Almost 20% just had a drug side effect, not even an allergy at all. Okay. Where we think that all allergies are the same, they're clearly not. No. Um, it, was, it was quite enlightening. So we're talking about people who may have had a, a weird side effect when they had some antibiotic at some point, yeah. and the physician's gone in and it might be an allergy, Yeah. and, and that's it. And they've been labeled, labeled an allergy forevermore, Correct. and it's actually just a a symptom of their illness yeah. or a drug effect? Yeah? Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, of those side effect ones, we call them type A mm -hmm. adverse drug reactions, um, most of them were gastrointestinal upset, which is a side effect of the drug. Yeah. Um, many of the other drugs were unknown or childhood listed allergies, yeah. um, probably reflective of either um, a poor product of penicillin when they were first generated in the 40s and 50s, yeah. particularly in these patients where our median age was 80. Um, or it was, as you said, reflective of the actual illness, yeah. you know, an exanthem secondary to a viral infection. All these people are wandering around with AAL written on their medical records. Yeah. What does that do for prescribing trends in the GP surgery, for example? Yeah, so I mean, this is a, that's a really good question. Uh, we haven't got a good idea of how it affects the general practitioner, um, and, we, and we need to do that. Mm. Uh, we've got surrogate markers, I guess, as inpatients. So, you know, from our early work, it shows that if you have an allergy label, you have increased restricted antibiotic use and inappropriate prescriptions, and that was recently published. And in this, it shows the same. So if you have an allergy label, you're more likely to receive a third generation cephalosporin, yeah. a fluoroquinolone, and less likely to receive a simple penicillin. Yeah. Should we be going back to the old school penicillins and rethinking those? You know, it's interesting. We, Wherever you have the possibility of using a simple penicillin is still our drug of choice. Yeah. Um, for community-acquired pneumonia, uh, for simple urinary tract infections, for certain bloodstream infections that cause heart valve infections, you know, we still want to use penicillin therapy. Yeah. And they're and they're superior to their alternatives. You know, the typical one is, you know, if you have staph bacteremia, 
we want to use a penicillin. And yeah. those patients do better than using the alternative like vancomycin. So we want to go back to the old antibiotics. And we're also turning back to them because we've got limited options. Yeah. And, you know, things like sulfur drugs are, are back in vogue and, and other, th other therapies we wouldn't have used five years ago or 10 years ago. Like Bactrim. Like Bactrim, yep. yeah, exactly like Bactrim. So, um, you know, that's another, that's a whole other kettle of fish soft one of my allergies as well. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're turning back to the older drugs. So how can you take this research and, and move it forward? What's the next step? Do you yeah, think? I mean, I think we've clearly, through this and some other work, demonstrated a burden. And I think our next point of call is determining what kind of services are available to the local practitioner and the inter internal physician. Yeah. Um, and we've got some surveys to do that. And then it's implementing. So I mean, we've um, created two dedicated antibiotic allergy clinics at the Austin and Peter McCallum Cancer Centre. Right. Effectively, they're de-labelling clinics. We want to okay. get people in, we want to skin prick test them and challenge them and remove the allergy labels. Uh, and that's very effective. And you know, previous works demonstrated that you can remove 90% of people's allergy labels. And that's work from from WA actually, which have done similar work. Yeah. But we need some simpler measures too. We need some things that GPs can do and we can do on the wards um, that are not cost, you know, that are not cost an arm and a leg yeah. and are not labor intensive. So I think our next step is to try and do an oral challenge study if we can, um, trying to risk stratify these people who are low risk and then give them a challenge in a supervised environment. Yeah. Considering many of them are, are not genuine allergies. Thank, Thank you for your time. No worries. Thank you.